Ursula, is it true? Will you help me become a better maker? My dear child, it's what I do. It's what I live for. To help unfortunate makers like yourself. Poor souls with no one else to turn to, to learn about steam. Come on, hurry. Sign the scroll. There's just a little toll you'll have to pay for only one day. Hmm, and what's the toll? Why, your fins, my angelfish. But without my fins, I can't swim. I'll sink. You'll have your arms. You'll have some legs. And don't forget the importance of buoyancy. <laughs> what does that word mean? Buoyancy? <laughs> oh, come on, you poor dear. There's no time to waste. We need to make you a better maker, now! Have you ever wondered why certain objects like pebbles tend to sink in water, while other objects like logs or even our bodies can float? This is because of buoyancy. Buoyancy is how well something floats or sinks. It is the power of a fluid to put an upward force on an object placed in it. An object that floats is considered buoyant. If an object is described as having positive buoyancy, that object is able to float. However, if an object is described as having negative buoyancy, that object is likely to sink. The concept of buoyancy has been around since 212 BCE with the Archimedes principle, which states, any object wholly or partially immersed in a fluid is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. In other words, any object placed in a liquid has the pressure of a force pushing up on it equal to the amount of liquid that has been moved out of the way by the object itself. Whether or not an object has buoyancy depends on two factors. The first factor is how much water is displaced by the object. The second factor is the object's density. Density is a measurement of an object's total mass divided by its volume. In other words, we can find the density of an object by dividing how much material an object contains by how much space that material takes up. As an example, let's pretend to throw a pebble into a pond. The pebble is very dense but displaces very little water because of its size compared to the vast amount of water. Because of this, the pebble is not very buoyant and will sink to the bottom. However, if we throw a basketball into the same body of water, we would see that it floats. The basketball has less mass, yet takes up more space. Therefore, it is less dense than the pebble. With the smaller density and larger size, the upward force from the displaced water will cause the ball to float. So what's the difference between mass and weight? Aren't they the same thing? Well, no. Mass is the amount of material that makes up an object, while weight is how much gravity pulls down on the mass of an object. Mass will always stay the same, while weight will depend on the gravitational pull. To help with showing the differences between mass and weight, here's an example using a one pound bag of sugar. On Earth, that one pound bag of sugar would have the mass of 453.6 grams and the weight of one pound. However, if we took that sugar to the moon, 
the mass would still be 453.6 grams, but its weight would only be 0.165 pounds. This is because gravity on the moon is only one-sixth of the gravity we have on Earth. Other science concepts to help with determining buoyancy include volume, which is the amount of space an object takes up or occupies, and force, which is a push or pull that acts on an object causing it to move or change shape or direction. So let's think bigger in terms of buoyancy. What about a cruise ship? These large behemoths of boats are many cities on the sea, so how are they able to float? The Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas is currently the world's largest cruise ship. This titan of the sea weighs over 228,000 gross tons. It also measures 238 feet tall while spanning 1,188 feet long. That's almost as long as four football fields. Let's add the over 6,000 passengers and 2,000 person crew, their food, luggage, and equipment, and you have to wonder, how does this thing stay afloat? And the answer is simple, buoyancy. As the cruise ship is placed in the water, it begins to sink down. The ship is sinking down because the water beneath it is being displaced or moved out of the way due to the force gravity has on it. The further the ship is submerged into the water, the more upward pressure the water uses against it. The ship will continue to sink into the water until the weight of the water has been displaced or equal to the total weight of the fully loaded cruise ship. This is otherwise known as equilibrium. Pressure is a force that is applied over a surface divided by its area. A strong push on a small area creates high pressure, while a weak push spread out over a large area creates only a little pressure. For the ship, there would be a strong push because it takes quite a bit of pressure to keep it afloat. Equilibrium is a balance between opposing forces. In the case of our ship, the force from gravity needs to be equal to that of the pressure from the water. That will prevent it from sinking. Now that we've learned the science and the terms, let's build a Cartesian diver to help demonstrate the principles of buoyancy we have learned today. In the STEAM craft kit, you should have received an empty plastic bottle with a plastic cap, a plastic pipette, and a 3 8 hex nut. For this experiment, you will also need enough tap water to fill your water bottle completely, a pair of scissors, and a hot glue gun or fast drying glue. Be sure to have a parent supervise or help. Our first step is to cut the pipette. About one inch from the bulb, make your cut. You want to make sure that you have a long enough tail for your hex nut to slide onto. Once you have your hex nut in place, take the hot glue or fast drying glue and affix your hex nut to the remaining pipette. This is your diver. While your glue sets up, go ahead and fill your bottle up with tap water. You want to make sure that you fill it up almost all the way to the top. You're going to want to leave a little space for any water that is displaced once your diver is in the bottle. Now it's time to place our diver inside the bottle. All you need to do is just drop it in and try not to squeeze the pipette bulb when you do. 
If you do, extra water might go in and weigh down the diver. Your diver should be partially submerged but still floating. Now go ahead and screw on the bottle cap and then prepare to dive. In order to make the Cartesian diver sink, you will need to squeeze or apply pressure to the bottle. By adding additional pressure, we are throwing the diver out of equilibrium and that causes it to sink. Have some fun with your Cartesian diver. You can make a game by applying different amounts of pressure to see where your diver will stop, or you can decorate your diver or bottle if you'd like to give it an aquatic scene. Remember to send in your photos, and thank you for watching. We'll see you later, makers. To request a Maker Steam Lab kit, please call the Creation Station at 760-777-7088.